Hello and welcome to the ninth tutorial of this series. Today's lesson will be based on shapes and splines. We mainly use these tools when creating 2D objects and so I'll be giving you a brief tutorial on how to use them and we'll begin to convert them into 3D objects on the next lesson. Now let's go back to our command panel and this time instead of having geometry under our create tab, go to shapes. As soon as you click that, you notice most of these you would have come across before, except maybe for this here, which is the end gun. What this does, it allows you to enter the amount of sides you want your shape to have. So, for example, uh, let's start off by going with uh, the preset, which is a hexagon. So, you can just add that. And uh, now I'm just going to make a heptagon. You notice we've got seven sides around this. And that's pretty much what that tool does for you. So I'm going to delete that and show you what we can do with the rest. So to create any other shapes, all you have to do uh, is click and drag it within any of the viewports here. So I'm going to use another circle just to show you uh, an example. So there we've got a circle. Um, can't see that properly. So I'll just right click on the word perspective and tick the show grid, maximize this viewport. And now we can see our, our circle clearly. Now I'm gonna create another one. One thing you notice, um, as we create different shapes, the colors are coming out as differently. So meaning each one of these shapes are individual shapes. So when you apply effects to them or you, or you, you choose to extrude them, they'll do so individually. But if you want to have, let's say, multiple shapes to all be part of one, uh, what you then have to do is go back to uh, whichever one you want to use and then untick the Start New Shape box at the top. As soon as you untick that, watch what happens. For example, right now we've got one, one circle selected. So we've got the, the white cube or the white markings around it to show that's our current selection. Now what will happen is, as I create these new shapes, they're automatically being marked as part of that shape. So, and our selection box keeps ex expanding as we create more new shapes. And all of them are the same in color, meaning we've literally got all those circles we've just created within one shape. So I'm going to show you. Uh, these are some of the stuff we created earlier, the individual ones. And as soon as I select one of these, you notice we've actually got quite a lot of them in there. And this helps out a lot and I will uh, be explaining it more to you uh, in future tutorials. Now just untick that for a second. Uh, let's delete that and I'm going to show you a few other things. So that was just a quick basic overview on how to create uh, the actual shapes. I'm now going to show you um, how to convert a shape into an editable spline uh, before you edit it or do anything else to it. So uh, I'm going to create a star. So just click and drag. Maybe something that size. So now we've got our star. Uh, what you need to do is right click on that, convert to, and then edit editable spline. As soon as you click that, this set of rollouts come out. And what, what this now means is that if we, for example, select the vertex, uh, we can select the segment or the spline, which will select the whole of it like that. The segment will only select uh, a part of it so you can edit it that way. You can also, uh, most importantly, use the vertex. This allows you to edit, edit your shape more freely. Now those dots are currently joined um, by these corners. So if you want to separate that and maybe add something to it, all you need to do um, is select that particular dot and then scroll down to the geometry section and then hit the break. As soon as you hit that and then reselect one of your points, you notice we've now separated uh, our star 
uh, obviously right now all this will make sense but as we get into the more complex tutorials uh, they all start coming together so if you've got a shape like this and you want to add more to it without being in your editable spline mode what will happen is uh, let me just um, let me just go back to normal selection if you create a line that will be a new line so they, it's not joined to uh, to the shape you wanted to add a line to now a way to add lines to your shape you just select that go back to your modifier panel and then click create line as soon as you click it within uh, the editable spline uh, section what that means is regardless of where you add that line so automatically part of the original shape say yes close that spline and when you let go you notice we've literally we've literally got one shape so they're not separate and that's just a quick overview into how part of the editable spline works and with regards to to the line tool the line tool is slightly different because we're not we don't have any presets we have to create something from scratch by ourselves so when you're creating something as you click and let go it's literally creating straight lines and as soon as you click and drag it kind of it makes a curvy point when you let go so you continue in that in that way you just keep clicking and dragging you're making it more curvy and as soon as you just click and continue you go back to your uh, original form and then if you let go of your line as it is there it won't be joined so you're gonna have to join it manually but uh, whilst you're creating make sure your two points meet until you get this little pop-up saying close spline once you say yes now you've got your shape created and then and you can then extrude that and turn that into a 3d object which we'll be exploring on the next tutorial but as for this tutorial i mainly wanted to show you uh, how the shape section works and how we might use it and give you an idea what we can do with it in the future so um i'll look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial uh, take care for now bye